Welcome to Healthy Hibbing, a new show brought to you by the Hibbing Chemical Health Advisory Committee. My name is Casey Bechtold. I am currently a member of the committee and I am going to speaking, be speaking with, with Pastor Norton, Kevin Norton, who is the chair of our committee, and Cheryl Bisping, who is the Community Health Outreach Coordinator for Fairview Range. Um, so Kevin and Cheryl, thank you for coming here today. Um, could you, Kevin, tell me a little bit about the committee? Yeah, the Hibbing Chemical Health Advisory Committee, and we're going to refer to it from now on as the committee because that's that's a mouthful. <laughs> it is. Or if we try to use the acronym, it's it's almost embarrassing to say. So we're going to stick <laughs> with the committee. It was established in 2009 to address okay. the community needs concerning chemical use. We had a concern about the use and misuse and abuse of chemicals. Okay. So our mission is to promote the well-being of our community's chemical health through education, prevention, and awareness. Okay. Then in 2012, our committee was awarded a <laughs> grant. The grant was called uh, Strategic Prevention Framework State Incentive Grant. Which is a mouthful. Which is a mouthful. <laughs> we fondly call it SPIFSIG. Okay. Um, and it doesn't really mean anything other than the fact that we got resources and funding from the Minnesota Department of Human Services and the Alcohol and Drug Abuse Division to carry on the work with the concerns and the research that we needed to do to effectively do the work that we wanted to accomplish. Okay. Now the membership of our committee is very broad. We have people that are from law enforcement, from the court system, we have people that are from the medical field, from the educational group, uh, from the religious sector. So really we have a well-balanced committee involvement that represents all areas of our community. Okay. We also, um, through the, the grant that we received, we were able to also send some of our people toward uh, training uh, and receive technical support to further develop the structure of our committee and what we hope to accomplish. As a part of that grant, then in March of 2013, uh, uh, we were able to start a youth advisory group. An advisor group is called Ta-da! Ta <laughs> T-A-D-A, <laughs> Teens Against Drugs and Alcohol in our high school system. And the group is now sustained through the school district itself, actually. And okay. as a school district official that is operating and leading the Tada group. And then we established a vision statement in 2014, which really is a requirement, something we needed to do anyway, but a requirement of the grant. And that statement is we envision a community in particular the community of Hibbing where people embrace a healthy lifestyle free from the misuse and abuse of alcohol tobacco and other drugs and I might just mention that the committee is not we're not here to say uh, we're against the use of alcohol or uh, or or legal drug use uh, medicines and that kind of thing, but we are standing firm of saying that we know that there's abuses of these things and to be really a healthy hibbing, we need to take measures in order to keep that in check and have healthy communities and healthy families. So kind of like educating uh, the community about different things that the chemicals can do and how to be healthy and uh, use them appropriately. Correct. Correct. Okay. One of those things that we have done is the social host ordinance, mm -hmm. and Cheryl has a better grip as to how that all works. I'm just going to mm -hmm. ask her to explain it a little bit. Well, we worked back um, when we had Mayor Rick Wolf um, with the social host ordinance, and that what that does is it's not about who supplies the alcohol to underage drinkers; it's about who is hosting the event or the party. Okay. So it could be um, an 18-year-old that has a party at their um, their dorm or you know somewhere in the community that could actually get charged with social host ordinance um, 
or it could be a parent hosting a party for their their youth at their house um, but it really goes after the host not who is providing alcohol so uh, we did work on that with the city when uh, mayor wolf wolf was um, the, the mayor so it for a parent to provide alcohol to their child or minors it is illegal if it's in even though it's in their house right well as a parent you can provide to your own child but if you have anybody else's children there um, teens um, then it is illegal okay um, so the, so the reason that we're doing that is um, and by the way that was that was not only through the mayor's office but through the city council mm -hmm. law enforcement okay. as we come along and so they enforce the laws and and then our committee we do have law enforcement on our committee so they give us reports and tell us is there anybody in violation of that and how often and so we have a kind of a gauge as to um, how well we're doing in educating the community about the dangers of underage drinking in particular okay. the other things that we have done uh, is we have a campaign called the uh, Hibbing the things to do the real things to do in Hibbing which there we have a list uh, poster actually I have everyone here excuse me uh, for reaching out of the camera here but we have posters like this uh, out in the community and different um, businesses and places um, that give people an idea of some fun activities uh, that you can do that won't need to involve alcohol or drugs or those kind of things and it was compiled actually by mostly young people mm -hmm. within our community who said well these are things they gave us the list these are things that we can do that aren't going to require that we have to find a beer party or something along that nature so we launched that campaign in 2014 and continue to see uh, people involved with that and we also can I interject yep. here um, you'll see window clings around the community that um, some of them will be on this show um, in the background but um, that have some of those activities on them. Okay. And uh, our Facebook page does that too. We promote some of those things on the real hibbing thing to do. So there is a Facebook page? There's yep. a Facebook page and a website. It's, it's right. running on the screen. Uh, a website is mm -hmm. actually, the show is named, it wasn't named intentionally after the website, but realized the teens that gave us the name it also matched the website, which is <laughs> healthy hitting. So that's interesting. That worked out wow. really well. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then we do have alcohol education curriculum that was implemented at the ninth grade level for uh, students, and mm -hmm. that was in 2013 and 14 mm -hmm. school year. Mm -hmm. okay. And that was to again help educate and make aware to those young people uh, the dangers of using alcohol at an early age and especially abusing that. And then we hosted learning community uh, and attended national and regional trainings. And again, that's for the purpose of actually educating our team so that we're not out there just saying, oh, you should be careful how you drink or you should be, you know, it's not a good idea to break the law. Mm -hmm. But the reasons why and how it affects us in the area of our physical well-being, but also in the area of our community well-being and those kinds of things. So Kevin and Cheryl, um, just wondering, are there any events coming up anytime soon? Yes, actually, we, uh, Fairview Range, is partnering, partnering with Hibbing Community College uh, for our Fun and Fit Expo. So last year we had our first annual Health Expo uh, at the college, and this year is our second annual, and we titled it Fun and Fit. Uh, that will be held Saturday, February 20th, from 10 to 3 at the Hibbing Community College. It is a free event. Um, okay. and. It's for the whole family to come down. We're gonna have um, health and safety and active living activities there. Um, so what are some of the other events or um, things that will be happening at the expo? Sure, so the biggest draw probably will be the inflatable games. We'll have an uh, obstacle course. Ooh, We're gonna have fun. sumo wrestling and we are gonna have the, a bounce house for the kids. Um, there, there will be educational booths there's going to be a lot of free health screenings. There's going to be a puppet show in the commons area for the kids. Oh. Um, and then HCC is going to have tours of their new nursing, the sim, um, simulated nursing lab that people can see. Okay, so it sounds pretty interesting mm -hmm. and a lot of fun things. Um, have you guys ever seen the sumo wrestling stuff before? No. no. Sure, no. I thought you were one of the wrestlers. <laughs> All right. 
Um, so what will the committee be doing at this expo? Anything? Well, we are actually going to have our Intoxic Clock and um, okay. yeah, so we'll have information and other activities. We're actually going to be partnering with the Masabi Safe Communities Coalition and I actually chair that coalition. That coalition works on traffic safety. Uh, so they're going to have their fatal vision goggles or their impaired vision goggles and, and we'll have the Intoxic What clock. are those exactly? <laughs> So they are actually goggles that you put on and there are different levels of blood alcohol concentration impairment that they simulate. So we would have you walk the line and wear a pair of those goggles and you would feel like you're impaired. It kind of demonstrates what impair different impairment levels would be like. Hmm. That should be fun, interesting. Um, so what is an intoxic clock? You kind of brought that up. <laughs> What is it? Yeah, so the Intoxic Clock is a fun, interactive tool that we use to educate the public on um, their pattern of alcohol consumption and how it would affect their blood alcohol concentration and their impairment levels. Um, and like I said, we will use that in combination with other activities uh, with Masabi Safe Communities Coalition. Mm -hmm. And we actually have a clip that we are going to show now about that intoxiclex so you can see what it is like. Oh, okay. So that'll be interesting. All right. So when you drink, what do you usually drink? Usually a couple tablespoons of rum and Dr. Pepper. All right. So I do have some rum here and um, there's ice mm -hmm. in this kind of glass you use. Yes. So mix your drink. I guess I don't have the pop, but... <laughs> And then you would pour your Diet Coke or Coke. So what I'm going to do is um, get the rest of the ice out. But I'm just going to get ready the ice and see how much you normally pour. Some people measure, some people just eyeball it. And so you have two ounces. A standard drink of hard liquor is one and a half ounce. Okay. Um, so your standard drink is going to be um, one and a half. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to go over to the intoxic clock. Okay. So what we're going to do is enter your gender and then how much do you weigh? 110. All right. So then we'll go to your weight. And 110. And then what time, if you had a drink, what time would you start drinking? Probably about 7 o'clock. Okay. So we will put the time at 7. And then you were one and a half drinks, right? Yes. Um, how long would you drink that? Would you slam it? Would you go 15 minutes or 30 minutes for a drink? Probably 45 minutes. Okay. So um, I'm going to do 30. I don't okay. have a 45 minute. Okay. So we're going to do a standard drink and a half. And then I'll do 30 minutes. And what it's going to start doing, I don't know if it went in there, it will start um, calculating what your BAC is and a countdown to when you're completely free of alcohol in your system. Mm -hmm. um, and that will give you the time. Okay. So do you just have one drink normally? Yes. In one night and you're yeah. okay. <laughs> so time. and then it also will show you a chart of you started at seven mm -hmm. and it just shows you um, you know when you peak and then again when you're back to zero. Oh okay. So do you have any questions on that? No, that was okay. that was really neat. And uh, we have information guides that talk about alcohol and the different mm -hmm. factors, but okay. Okay, Tony, what do you usually drink when you go out? Let's see, a screwdriver. Okay, would you like to mix yourself yeah, I can one? Do it. All right, there's some ice for you. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, I um, can pour the beverage out again. Measure. And would you use that much ice usually? Because you no. could have changed that. If no, it's, it's probably okay. fine. Ooh, okay. So for you, um, I need glasses, but that is um, your 
you're over, you're about three and a half, I would say, standard drinks in that one screwdriver, okay? So now we're going to enter this into the Intoxiclock, and uh, of course you're a male, and can I ask how much you weigh roughly? It's 247. Okay. So I'm just entering that up here, and I'll just do 245, and then your um, standard drink, when do you usually start drinking? Probably around 9. 9 at night? Yeah. Okay, so we go up to the clock, and I'm going to move that up to nine. All right, and then your standard drink was three and a half. Okay, and how long would you take to drink that? Right away, 15 minutes or 30? I'd say about a half hour. Okay, so we'll go 30 minutes. And would you stop at one at? No, probably three or four. Three or four, like every 30 yeah. minutes? Yeah, probably. Okay, so then we're adding another three and a half. And just, you know, so now you're at like seven servings and you're turned red because you're over the legal limit. And then we're going to do it one more time because you said you would have three. So you're not um, going to be sober till 8.30 in the morning. but. If you're going to work the next day or if you're driving home, you're still intoxicated till about 8.30 in the morning. And that's what people don't realize. Mm -hmm. So um, be aware of that. It's really good to know. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Mary. Thanks for being our third participant. You usually drink wine, you said. I do. All right. Do you mind pouring how you would normally pour? And is that the size glass you would use at home? It's pretty close. Okay. If this was white. All right. And so we're going to use this beaker instead of the shot glass to measure. And I'm going to put it on the table a little bit. And when we look at wine, one, one and three quarters, one and a half. You're doing yeah. that. Yeah. Just about. Okay. So we'll, we'll go one and a half. Okay. All right. So we're going to move over to the intoxicant. Okay, so we're going to enter your data into the intoxiclock, and you are female. I certainly, <laughs> I certainly am. And how much do you weigh? Oh, I really have to tell you. Well, you can get. I would say 154. Okay. Well, we can leave it at 150 because it goes up by one. <laughs> okay. By five. We like that. So, okay. What time would you have your glass of wine? As soon as I got home from work. Okay. So is start that cooking 4:30 or four, five? Okay. Should we leave it at five? Is that good? Sure. All right. And then you would have one and a half, and then would that be over 30 minutes or 15? I would say over 30. Okay. That's while I'm cooking. All right. And then would you have another I one? I would have another one while I was eating. Okay. So that's another 30. All right. And maybe one more. Okay. After. So you're having about uh, four and a half standard drinks. Um, your blood alcohol concentration is 0 0.158. Um, and then it will take you 10 and a half hours roughly for your blood alcohol to come to zero. And so that would be at 3.30 in the morning. What we find is that um, alcohol can interrupt your sleep a little bit too. So if you're waking up at 3.30, or, you know, that could be from the wine. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just something to know. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Well, that clip looked really interesting. It seems like it's a very interactive activity. It's a very educational activity. And people kind of get to see, like, what their pouring or their drinking habits are like and what they're going to, what it could result into their blood alcohol level. Right, when we were at the expo last year, um, we had a lot of people that were surprised by what their drink pours were and um, how intoxicated you know, they would be even in the morning, let's say when they went to work. So um, I know it made a difference for some of the people there because they're like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to do that when I, I go out next time um, because they didn't realize they were still impaired in the morning.
that's the whole point mm -hmm. of our committee is to help bring awareness and education. So mm -hmm. it's a very valuable tool. It right. is. Um, so why is it important for people to know about how the alcohol affects their blood alcohol level? Well, again, most people overestimate how much alcohol they can drink and they underestimate um, how much time it takes for the body to actually get rid of all the alcohol in their system and go back to zero. So here again, they might decide that, oh, I'm okay, and get in the car and drive. Um, or like I said, heaven forbid, go to work in the morning and get fired because they're impaired when they go to work mm -hmm. and they still smell of alcohol. So, um, so you know, it's just an eye opener for people. Okay. Um. What is uh, the absorption rate for alcohol with people's bodies? Well, one serving of alcohol, which um, I will talk about what that is in a little bit, is uh, usually absorbed in the, in the, to the bloodstream about 30 minutes to two hours, depending on some factors that I'll also talk about. Um, but, you know, that all varies by individual. Mm -hmm. And um, alcohol, we know, burns off or gets metabolized by the liver at pretty a precise um, it's like 0, 0 0.016 um, blood alcohol concentration per hour. So it's about a standard drink, again, um, each hour. And it doesn't matter if you're 5'3", like myself, or 6 foot like Kevin. Both of our bodies can only get rid of about a standard drink of alcohol per hour. So, um, you know, it doesn't matter that way. The impairment level, however, if Kevin and I drink the same amount will be different. Um, but our blood alcohol level will, um, you know, we, we won't, yeah. Okay. So you just mentioned something about a standard drink. Mm -hmm. Could you explain what that is? Well, if you're drinking a distilled spirit like rum, whiskey, vodka, it's going to be 1.5 or 1 1.5 ounces if mm -hmm. it's a 80 uh, proof or 40% alcohol. So one and a half ounces, you know, um, would be a standard drink of hard liquor. Um, wine, it's five to six ounces. Your white wine has little less alcohol than your red. So a white mm -hmm. wine, you can drink six ounces for a standard drink, a red, five. Um, if it's beer, it's a, you know, can of beer, 12 ounces, glass, 12 ounces. And again, some of the microbreweries, some of the darker beers are a higher alcohol percent. Um, a 12 ounce at 5% is what is a standard drink. So if you're drinking um, some of those uh, heavier beers, it would be less than that. So what's this, what's the standard, like a beer bottle, what's the standard? A 12 ounce. 12 ounce. Well, a, yeah, I think a can is 12 ounce. Yeah. Okay. And the shot glasses? Um, I measured my, I was experimenting, and my shot classes at home are actually only an ounce, and I think they come in different sizes, so that's, you know. So it would vary. It would vary. Mm -hmm. okay. So, in other words, <laughs> check out your shot glasses mm -hmm. and figure out how much you're actually putting in right. it, right? Right. Um, so, does food affect the way your body absorbs alcohol in any way? Yeah, it certainly does because um, let's say, you know, I went all day without eating and then I decide to go out to the bar um, mm -hmm. and have a drink or go home and have a glass of wine. Um, there's nothing in my stomach and my, the alcohol is going to get absorbed right through the stomach lining pretty fast. Now, if I went home and ate, um, that food is going to slow the absorption because the stomach is working on that as well. Okay. Um, so we, we like to tell people, you know, try not to drink on an empty stomach. Try to eat before you have a drink. Uh, eat while you're drinking. And it's always a good idea if you've been out. Um, I kind of like the weddings where they have sandwiches after the d band is done playing or the DJ. Uh, yeah. So you can have a hand sandwich or something just to slow down the alcohol absorption and give yourself time for that. Um, Do you crash a lot of weddings then? No, not. I was just gonna say, <laughs> I'm not a wedding crash. No. <laughs> Get some free food. I have a big family though, so I go to a lot of them. <laughs> okay. So, um, what else kind of affects your blood alcohol level? I've heard of a couple different things like body weight, um, your gender in mm -hmm. specific. Well, of course, the number of drinks you're gonna have, and um, what you're drinking, and then uh, how fast you drink. 
if okay. I if I slam a drink, um, my blood alcohol is going to spike, and if I'm done, it will come down, but it's going to spike. If I uh, drink a normal, you know, standard drink in 30 minutes, it's going to do a nice curve. Mm -hmm. um, but if if I sip and um, you know just take it really slow, it probably won't even get me over the legal limit at all. In fact. You know, it's better for someone to actually sip a drink or at least drink a drink instead of slamming because what happens is alcohol is a depressant and if, um, if you get to a certain point at first when you drink, you feel kind of good. good. Yeah. It actually feels like, you know, euphoria a little bit. But when you get to a certain level, then that depressant kicks in and it goes downhill from there. Okay. So it's kind of nice to keep it at that lower level. So if you're already depressed, it probably wouldn't be a really good idea to have a lot of drinks? No, you know, it's, re it's really not a good thing to, to help you with depression. Um, in fact, it can't interact with some medications. If you're on antidepressants um, and you start drinking, that, that can be harmful. Um, and that's another thing people have to consider is if they're on medications. There's a lot of medications you shouldn't drink with. Like antibiotics, I know that mm -hmm. one. Antibiotics, even uh, over-the-counter uh, acetaminophen, Tylenol, um, is really hard on your liver. And if you start drinking with uh, taking Tylenol, it can destroy your liver. Okay. Um, so it's really important to know um, that there, you know, narcotics, if you're pain medication, high blood pressure medication, all of that. You should really be talking to a doctor or pharmacist before you add alcohol to any I was, medication. I was going to ask, well, how do you know? Mm -hmm. But you'd be talking to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I don't know if I mentioned weight because... It, I had brought that up. Yeah. The, the heavier person has more bot or fluid in their, their body than a lighter person. Okay. And so it, the alcohol will dissipate more in a heavier person. Um, women, uh, we have more fat cells. So that means the alcohol won't go into the fat, it will only go into the cells and um, the blood. So it, it will affect us faster or longer than a man because they don't have as much body fat on them. Okay. Um, is there anything else people should really consider about when they're drinking? Um, yeah, uh, you should look at who is pouring your drink. Um, we kind of talked about this before the show um, that I like to measure my drinks and my husband makes fun of me, but, but that way I know how much I'm getting. But if you go to a bar and they pour a drink, you know, are they doing a, you know, yeah, just eyeballing. a bar pour? I know, yeah. I know a lot of people I've seen, they just kind of like dump it in and go with whatever they And they is. eyeball it. Yeah. My husband will use his fingers, you know, or whatever. Um, to measure, but that makes a difference between if I'm if I make myself a drink or my husband makes myself a drink. I know my drinks are usually a lot weaker than my husband would make them, for instance. Um, so that's something you should look at. And other things up here, especially we have a lot of shift workers. Mines. Mm-hmm. And law enforcement, firemen. Um, yeah. Even the clergy can be out late, I'm sure. But if you don't get a <laughs> never. <laughs> yeah. But if you don't get enough sleep, you're already tired, and then you add alcohol to that, um, and it's a depressant, so it can, you know, add on to that fatigue. Um, I read that if if you're tired, your liver actually slows down, and so it oh. won't metabolize um, your your alcohol as fast. So that's another thing to be concerned with and pay attention to if you're well rested or not. Alcohol also affects your sleeping habits, right? Yes, good point. Um, if you have a drink before bed to help you fall asleep, unfortunately, you'll probably wake up in the middle of the night because it does mess up your sleep cycle. Okay. So a lot of people, you know, they'll say, oh, I didn't sleep, you know, well. Sleep well after drinking yeah. for a night. Or you might end up with a migraine or headache, hangover, you know, yeah. so. Okay. Um, Can I just inject here for a second? Because mm -hmm. we're talking... What we're talking about mostly is adults mm -hmm. that are fully developed. Mm -hmm. With the teens, that's a, that's a different story we'll hear about in another program. But 
but we're dealing with those that are that are mature physically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it just have it'll have an increased negativity if it's a young person. Yeah, good yeah. point. Um, the brain doesn't fully develop till somebody is 24 years old. There's a lot of science behind this. So if you add anything to the developing brain, whether it's alcohol, any other drug, you know, um, it it messes with how it develops. So it's really not a good idea to be drinking underage. Um, it it you know, and if you're pregnant and you drink, uh, you can cause fetal alcohol syndrome in a child. So there's a lot of things to consider with our, our youth. And we talked about lowering inhibitions when you drink. And so somebody might not do, or somebody might do something they normally wouldn't. Um, you know, there's a lot of sexual assaults when people are drinking, uh, crashes, you know, just a lot of things, bad things can happen to our youth when they're drinking underage. They don't really think about the consequences that can come from it. No. The no. destroying, uh, the injuries mm -hmm. that they are doing to their body just by using. And their frontal lobe is what doesn't develop until age 24 mm -hmm. and that's your decision making part of your brain. So they're already at a disadvantage there and then you add alcohol into it and it mm -hmm. just, it's that much worse. Um, I did forget to talk about um, when you mix drinks versus if, if I mix a drink with sugar, um, like a, a sugar sweetened beverage like a Coke okay. versus Diet Coke, sugar makes the alcohol absorb faster. Carbonation will also do that. So those are some other things to consider when you're drinking. Okay. Um, also, if you're trying to lose weight, I'm assuming it wouldn't be good to drink alcohol because they're empty calories, right? They're definitely empty calories, really no nutritional value in alcohol. Um, there is some uh, science out there about uh, antioxidants in red wine, but then there's also research about cancer and, and so there, you know, the fine line about if it's good or bad for you, mm -hmm. but definitely weight loss, not good. Lots of empty calories. In fact, when we go to the expo, if people come, we have a big banner that shows Alco calories in the drink and standard drinks in their drink and they'd be amazed at how many calories are in some of the drinks that they drink um, and plus it is a depressant and it makes some people uh, actually crave food and want to eat so it mm -hmm. stimulates their appetite and that adds more calories as well okay um, also can medications and dehydration we covered the medication part right. of it but does dehydration or anything like that play a part in the way alcohol is absorbed? Oh, certainly. Um, less body fluid in you because you've been sweating, working outside, say in the summer, and you decide to have a beer because you're hot. It's good on a summer day, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if you are dehydrated, it's going to hit you faster okay. um, than if you're well hydrated. So that's a good point, too. Okay. And um, so what, what do you want? everyone and participants that come to the Fun and Fit Expo to take away from that experience? Well, our goal is to get people to think, start thinking, actually right now as they're watching the show even, you know, what are my drinking habits? Um, maybe, maybe I can start with this, because mm -hmm. uh, some people are mi misunderstanding the, the purpose of our committee. Okay. It's not yeah. to get people to stop drinking but rather to drink in a way that's healthy and responsible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we kind of sound yeah. like a beer commercial, but drink responsibly. Um, but, you know, we want them to think about, am I going out tonight? Um, do I have a safe drive home? You know, do I need to get somebody to be a designated driver? Do I need to make arrangements to stay overnight? Um, you know, what are those things to be thinking about? Um, do you have to work in the morning? You know, should I be drinking 10 beers when I have to get up in four hours to go to work? You know, that kind of thing. Um, do you really mm -hmm. want a hangover when you're going to work? <laughs> you know, those aren't fun if you've ever had one of those. No, I, back in the day I had mm -hmm. quite a few and mm -hmm. they were not fun, mm -hmm. so. We get older and wiser. <laughs> yes, just a heads up, kids. Well, we do, we do want, um, we, we want adults to enjoy themselves, but to do so in a, in a fashion that 
they're thinking through the process, mm -hmm. adding all these, and I know there's a lot of information we threw out today, but, but really to sit down and say, okay, if I'm gonna have a drink, when's the last time I had a drink? And, and, and am I eating? And, mm -hmm. and am I eating with it? Yes, mm -hmm. and, and am I tired? And mm -hmm. what's motivating me to wanna to do this? And, mm -hmm. Um, and what kind of drink it? I mean, there's a mm -hmm. lot of stuff to be involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People drink, uh, a lot of people drink uh, alcohol in different forms, and they live a very uh, safe and healthy lifestyle. What we're concerned about are those folks that aren't stopping to consider mm -hmm. what it might do to them or do to their surroundings or their family or their community. Mm -hmm. And I forgot to mention tolerance. So if you drink, Ignore, you know, you, if you drink a lot or all the time and on a daily or normal yeah. basis, if you're used to drinking, um, you know, you might not feel the effects as somebody that doesn't drink very often. Mm -hmm. However, your body can still only metabolize that standard drink an hour. So even though you might feel that you can go and drive, you might be at a very high BAC level. Kind of like those buzzed driving mm -hmm. is still drunk driving mm -hmm. type right. thing, right? Right, right. We have a lot more that we could cover, but that's why we're having a show. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense, right guys? Yeah. Um, so this fit, fun and fit activity sounds like a very educational mm -hmm. and very informative activity to go to for families, especially, you know, if you want to learn some different things mm -hmm. about alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, so community Hibbing community mm -hmm. we hope to see you guys at the fun and fit activity um, it is on February 20th from 10, 10 to 3, 3 at, at the HCC. Hibbing College yep. Commons area right yeah well we'll be in the Commons area in we'll the hall in the, okay screenings will be in the Commons area but the big gym has the inflatables so okay. we're actually going to be spread out all over because then you have the nursing lab so just come, it will be a great day. If it's cold out, bring the family. If it's not cold out, still bring the family. Just, there's a lot to see and do in three health screenings, so it's gonna be worth it. I'll be there, <laughs> that's for sure. I'm ready, let's go. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode of Healthy Hibbing. Um, we look forward to seeing you guys at the event coming up on February 20th. Uh, stay tuned for our next episode. <laughs>